In this video, I'm gonna be installing a transfer switch in my home, which makes it very easy to switch from utility power to a backup power source. In my case, a Renogy Lycan 5000. The transfer switch that I chose is a Reliance Controls 306D. And I liked it because six breakers or six switches was about the right amount for what I wanted to back up. And it also had this area where you could install a plug on the front of it, which was really nice. The unit itself does not come with the plug though. In the instruction manual, it says that they're, they don't include the plug because they're trying to encourage people to put the, the plug on the outside, which would be really important if you were using a gas power generator as your backup source. But because we're using uh, the Renogy, which is a battery powered backup source, we can run that on the inside. And so a plug being by the breaker is really convenient for me. Now with the wires, it did not come with a little ground wire for the plug, but I noticed that the ground wire that they did include was just a little bit long. So I assume they gave you that little extra cord there so you can use, the, use it as your ground wire for your plug. So I just cut that off and used that little extension for, for the ground. You could wait to install the plug after you have it mounted. You have to take that off anyways, the cover off anyways, to put some screws to secure it to the wall. But I just did it beforehand because I found it to be a little bit easier, or I thought it would be a little bit easier doing it on a bench as opposed to on the wall. First, I need to take the covers off my breaker boxes to expose the inside of it. Next, I'm gonna mark out where I want the transfer switch to be. The cord or the, the conduit that they give you is not very long. So unless you wanna buy different conduit, you're gonna to have to mount this transfer switch pretty close to the breaker where your breaker box, where you're gonna be tapping into the breakers. In my case, I had everything in my utility room is wood. So I mounted it directly to the wood. And then behind this area is my air conditioner. So I can actually see this area, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. If you don't have that setup where you can't see behind where the transfer switch and have access to your panel, what I've seen other people do is cut an area below their breaker box, directly below their breaker box, that they can then access and work on, and then basically just put a little cover over it so you don't have to do drywall work. Put a little cover over it so that it hides what, you, you know, what you've exposed. The conduit, the flexible conduit, was just a little bit too long in my case, so I used a bandsaw to cut it down just a little bit. You could use a hacksaw, which would be, you know, just a little bit slower, but that would work just as well. Putting all the wires in this conduit is a little bit of a challenge because there's so many wires. So it was not the easiest thing, but with a little bit of work, I made it, I made it happen. Putting this adapter underneath the breaker box really required two people, one to hold it in place while the other one on the other side of the wall put the nut on it, but I didn't have anybody available so I just used a piece of tape. All right, now that we've got the transfer switch mounted and we've got our wires running to our breaker box, it's time to wire the transfer switch up to the breaker box. But before we do that, let's just talk real quick about what's going on in here. Now, a breaker box is really, can be thought of as just as a distribution point. You've got power coming into it from your utility company in most cases, and then power is distributed out to your house. So you've got a breaker for your master bedroom, your breaker for your master bath, and so on and so forth, right? So when we talk about power coming in, there's actually four wires coming in. There's a ground, a neutral, and then two hots. And those, each of those hots is 120 volts, and you get two of them so that you can combine them together occasionally to give you 240 volts, which you might need for, let's say, a dryer or um, your heater or maybe your oven or something along those lines, something that requires a lot of power. All right, so we've got power coming in, power going through the breakers. Uh, and when I'm saying power, I'm really just talking about the hots. The, the ground and the neutral that come in, those are essentially, they just get passed through this box. There's nothing that the breaker box does to them. They just literally come into the house and get distributed out through the house. And this just has one uh, ground and neutral on it. Uh, you know, so it just ties into those. What we're really interested in is these hots. These are all, you know, these are all uh, the hots that are gonna pass through the, the transfer switch. 
All right, so power comes into the breaker box, goes through the breakers, hot comes into the um, breakers and passes out. And that's great, right? That's how, your, that's how your power system works in your house. The problem is, is that what we're trying to solve here is what happens when power goes out. Your, your utility company stops providing you power. So now power doesn't come in through the hot area, doesn't go through the breakers and doesn't go out to the house. So the wire that is doing that, what we wanna do is we wanna splice into it so that in the event that power stops coming in, we can send our own power from a generator or in my case, the Renergy Lycan, we can send our own power out to the rest of the house and forget about, not worry about the power that's no longer coming in, okay? And that's really where, the, that's the whole point of a transfer switch. And the way it does it is in a really safe way to where you've got generator or line, meaning line your utility company or generator being our power source that we're gonna plug in here, the Lycan. You have to manually switch these over from one to the other. And the reason why that's the safest way is if you just, you know, you could technically, if you lose power, you could technically plug a power supply into your, into an outlet and it would power your house, right? But um, that's not, you would not want to do that. That's not a safe way to do it. There's a couple reasons it's not safe. One is that you'd have a plug that would be energized and be, you know, that might shock you. You don't want to do that. But then the other problem that you have is what happens when the utility company turns power back on and suddenly you're pushing your power into the house, the utility company is pushing their power into the house and all of a sudden power starts to flow in ways that you may not anticipate and that equipment may not be able to handle. So we don't want to do, we don't want to do that. So the transfer switch has by default in when it's in line, it's allowing the power that's coming in from the utility company passing through the breaker. It just passes through the transfer switch and then goes out to the house. Power goes out, we come down here, we switch it over to generator. And then now it cuts the power coming from the utility company, even if even though there is no power, but there may be power in the future, it cuts that power and then it starts taking power in from our, our plug right here and it'll send out to the house. The, comp the power turns back on eventually, you come back down here and you can turn your, you know, you can switch these over to line from the utility company and then turn off your power source. So that's, that's the whole point of this thing. Now, what you may have noticed though, is that there are six inputs here, six breakers, six places that I can switch over. When I look at this breaker box, there are a lot of breakers in here. There's 30 breakers. I've got another box over here that's got another 30. So we've got 60 breakers and we've only, we're only able to splice in because of the size of this transfer switch, we're only able to splice in to six of them. So for me, I had to decide what are the six most important breakers that I want to splice into. And so for me, that included refrigerators, want to make, you know, if power goes out, I want to be able to supply power to the refrigerators. That's probably the most important. I don't want to lose food. Uh, lighting in our general common areas, lighting in my master bedroom, uh, some area for the, some public areas for the kids, a bathroom. So it's mostly for me, it's mostly just, you know, lighting uh, cer certain areas of my house and then also all the refrigerators. I want the refrigerators to be on. So going back to the wires that we have here, we've got the, like I said, a ground and a neutral, and there's only, you know, one each of those. And so we're gonna just splice those in. And on this side of my breaker box, I've got all my grounds wired into a bus bar. A bus bar is just nothing but a hunk of metal with a bunch of screws on it that allow you to very easily, very efficiently connect wires to them. So I'll just unscrew one of those, slide the wire in, screw that back in. Same thing for the neutral. The neutral's got a bus bar, its own bus bar. And so I'll just tie that in. But then we get to the, the hots, the, the ones that uh, are gonna really, the ones that carry the power, let's say. Um, all right, so for each one of these, we look at these, these switches, each breaker and each switch has a, a, a letter corresponding to it. So there's six of them, so A through F. And when I look at these wires, there's for each one of these, there is a wire coming in and there is a wire going out. And so the wires uh, coming in are the red wires and the wires going out are the black wires. And so when I look at them, if you look closely at them, they're labeled with the letter that corresponds to here. So you'll want to keep these together as you work on them. So for me, let's say I, I selected this breaker, I will take out the, the black wire, the hot wire from the breaker, take it out, uh, take the red wire, that's coming from the corresponding breaker over here and put, put it into the breaker. And then I'm gonna take the black wire and just wire nut it together with the wire that used to go into the breaker, all right? So what I'm doing is instead of the breaker having power go out to the part of the house, it's now sending that power out to the transfer switch 
and then the wire coming back from the transfer switch is going to go out to the house. All right, so we're just kind of splicing into it. And then the transfer switch is going to decide through whatever switch I put on and put off, it's gonna decide where the power is coming from. Is the power coming from the utility company or is the power coming from, from this plug? So that's, that's it, that's as easy, you know, that's, that's pretty easy. Now you will wanna make sure that you, you know, they, they, in the documentation, they warn that you will wanna make sure that you put the red wire into the breaker and the black wire gets spliced into the wire that was going out to your house. You do not wanna reverse them. You'll lose some safety mechanisms from that. And so uh, you definitely wanna make sure you, you, know, you follow that. Also for, when I say wire nut, I used to wire nut things together all the time uh, when I would do electrical, but um, Ever since I got turned on to these little Wagyu connectors, this is the way to go. This makes, uh, this makes it super easy. There's just a little connector that has two little levers on it, in this case two, because this is a two wire Wagyu. Uh, but you just put one wire in, you close it, you close the little lever, you put the other wire in, close the little lever, and then you're done. No more twisting the wires, no more, you know, two wires, it's not very, obviously, you know, or it's not very difficult to do, to do it correctly. But as you get more wires, it becomes more difficult. So the more wires, the more important these comp become, but uh, this just makes it so simple. I use them for everything now. Here I'm installing the neutral into the neutral bus bar. Here I'm installing the ground wire into the ground bus bar. Now I'm splicing in the transfer switch into one of the hotlines. So I'm removing the wire from the breaker and then I'm gonna take the corresponding black wire from the transfer switch and tie that together with that wire. And I'm using a Wagyu connector like I mentioned earlier. And now it's time to take the red wire and attach that to the breaker. At first I tried just leaving the breaker in place and sliding it into the, into the hole on the side, but I found that I was missing the, the piece that actually tightened down on it. So I just found it to be a lot easier if I just removed the breaker. So I did that for all of them. Now that I've got the transfer switch wired up, it's time to test it. And so how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna switch off the breakers that correspond to the ones that I've connected to the transfer switch. I'll verify that the power went off. I wanna make sure that the things that I connected the transfer switch to are the correct breakers. It's always good to check, find that out now before you know the power actually goes out. And then uh, once I verify that the power has gone out where I expect it, I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna take my Renogy Lycan, connect that to the transfer switch and turn it on. And then I'll switch these switches to switch the power going to those items away from this, which now no longer has power because I've turned off the breakers, and then uh, to switch it over to the, the Renji. Once I do that, I'll go upstairs and verify that those, those uh, places have power now. 
I powers out like I'd expect. I had to purchase a special extension cord to connect the Renogy Lycan to the transfer switch. The Renogy Lycan has a TT30 connector, which is a 30 amp three prong connector. And the transfer switch has a NEMA 1430 connector lockable, which has four prongs. But fortunately they make a extension cord that has, a, has those adapters on either end. All right, power's back on. Once I got it running, I started the DC Home, the Renogy DC Home app to see what the load was. And with my kids watching TV and the lights on and, and the refrigerators running, the load was about 924 watts. And so if I actually had a power outage, I would expect that I would turn off a lot of my appliances to reduce that load. But even with that load, with everything going, um, I had about five hours and 48 minutes of battery runtime.